Howdy folks, how's it going? Gabriel here. So in this video then I wanted to discuss uh, what is undoubtedly one of the big questions of our time, which is, is there life on other planets? Is there alien life? Or are we completely alone here on planet Earth amidst the vast cosmos that we now know exists? So here on Earth, then there is of course a incredibly wide array of life existing, millions of different species of plants and animals existing in every corner of the Earth. And so we know that life can exist in a very wide range of different conditions, from you know the scorching desert of Death Valley to the uh, peak of Mount Everest, and even in Antarctica and at the uh, you know bottom of the ocean in Marianas Trench, thirty thousand feet below the the surface of the ocean, are tiny uh, creatures existing in a climate that is absolutely unimaginable to us. The intensity of uh, the pressure and complete and utter darkness, and yet their, their life exists. So we can see into the furthest reaches of space now. We know what a vast cosmos this is, but we have yet to find absolute proof that life actually exists. So I just wanted to throw out there two um, different uh, facts, pieces of evidence, that in my mind prove that there is life on other planets based on just statistics and common sense. And the first thing that I'm going to mention here is completely accepted, mainstream, well-known, even though it's relatively uh, recent information. The second is not, uh, not at all accepted by the mainstream, um, but uh, I'm going to post below this video two links to um, articles discussing both of these topics for people who want to check it out some, um, some more there. So the first is just the basic astronomical fact that within the Milky Way galaxy, there is now estimated to be 20 billion or so habitable Earth-like planets. That is not determining what their exact atmosphere or anything looks like because they can't, they can't see that. But based on the size of the planet and the distance of the planet from its star, etc., then they can uh, you know, postulate that it is similar to Earth in, in just very basic general terms. And uh, based on its distance from the sun, it could conceivably have liquid water, uh, which is, of course, one of the basic elements of life. So based on the best estimates um, now, then there are believed to be as many as 20 billion habitable Earth-like planets within the Milky Way galaxy. Now there are believed to be estimated somewhere between 100 to 500 billion galaxies within the observable universe. That's a hell of a lot of galaxies, each of which has a hell of a lot of stars and a hell of a lot of uh, habitable Earth-like planets. So you have trillions and trillions, I don't even know what the, you know, what the number is, it's beyond trillions. Just take 20 billion times 500 billion. Um, potentially habitable planets throughout this universe. That's really all you need to know to, to uh, for all practical purposes, know that there has to be other life out there. The concept that there are all these beyond your comprehension numbers of, of other planets in the, in the universe and that life only would have appeared here on Earth and yet the fact that it appears on Earth in such a, a wide array across such a, a uh, wide spectrum of different climates, showing that life is so resilient that conditions do not have to be exactly 100% you know, perfect for life to, to develop, but if there's the remotest chance that, that something can survive, then there will be life. 
life there. Life is trying to inhabit every corner of, of the universe that it possibly can. Just based on that, that fact alone of the number of, of planets, you pretty much have to assume that there is other life out there. But when you add a uh, piece of evidence number two to the equation, then it's in an absolute slam dunk case that there has to be other life out there. That it is, it is, uh, you know, seems to me to be statistically impossible that there would not be other life in the universe. And so I'm going to mention a experiment here cited in the book by David Wilcock, uh, The Source Field Investigations. And I realize that this video will automatically get some thumbs down simply based on having mentioned David Wilcock, but he is simply citing an experiment by someone else conducted by a researcher um, from South America, I think it was in Venezuela, in which, and I will just kind of briefly sum up what the experiment is, and then, and then you can look below for uh, the article to uh, you know, read further into this. So this guy took test tubes, he put some sand inside, he then completely sterilized the test tubes in a way that no um, life forms whatsoever could possibly be inside there. And then put these uh, completely sealed test tubes in a vacuum environment of some kind and allowed them just to sit there. And then lo and behold, within 24 hours, there were tiny microscopic life forms inside these test tubes growing on the sand that was inside the test tubes. And there are photos uh, of, the, of the little creatures that developed there in the article that's down below. The uh, conclusion then, based on this experiment, is that life is manifesting in the physical world by bleeding through from another realm that we cannot detect with our physical instruments because it is not a physical world. That life in this universe is simply a manifestation of a non-physical universe that also exists and that life is simply bleeding through into this realm. And so it is seeking to exist to, to uh, sprout anywhere that it possibly can, even in a, in a sterilized vacuum. And so this definitely throws a whole other spin on the, the concept of life in the universe. If this experiment is true, you know, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the question in this year because, um, you know, this is not accepted by the mainstream uh, scientific community by any means, and, and uh, I don't know if it's actually been duplicated or attempted to be duplicated or not. It sounds like it's a simple enough experiment that it, that it could be, but uh, David Wilcock's book has been out there for three years, and no doubt lots of people are waiting for the opportunity to jump on him and to prove him wrong. Um, so I would think if, if this experiment was invalid, in some way that that somebody would have would have already uh, you know poked a hole in it. So feel free to check the link down below the video here and and uh, and look into it yourself. It is a very fascinating article. You have to just get past uh, David Wilcox's ego a little bit in his bombastic pronouncements of how monumental this uh, this uh, you know discovery is at the beginning of the article, but then he gets into the, the uh, solid evidence eventually. So uh, it's worth a read. And if you have any further input here, I'm definitely curious to, uh, to read other perspectives on this, especially if you have some, some scientific expertise to, to offer to this, because I don't know, I'm just you know, adding one and one together here, and, and uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm not the, the first guy to do this. I, I think this might be mentioned in David Wilcock's book, you know, putting these two facts together. I forget, but this was just something that I was thinking about, and so I thought I'd just make a video and put, put the articles out there for other people to check it out. So, um, looking forward to your uh, 
comments below. But if A and B are, are true, the first thing I mentioned about the billions of planets out there, and then point B about life being able to manifest in a vacuum, then, you know, alien life, C, A plus B equals C, as best as I can see here. Now, the, the, uh, the, the big variable here then is, what kind of life are you talking about? Is it just microbes is existing in, um, you know, in ice or, or, you know, very rudimentary life forms existing on other planets or not? There's no way to, uh, to know that, but all you have to do is look at Earth. Life here has been developing for billions of years, and these other planets out there have also been existing um, for as long as Earth, if not longer. It just makes common sense to assume that if life is manifesting in, in the universe this easily across these trillions upon trillions of different planets out there, that it would have developed on some of these planets as well to some kind of a complex, perhaps uh, intelligent, self-aware life form as occurred here on Earth. So, all right, thanks for watching. Take care.